is BOL Radio. Have your say. Advice line. Seb Chia. Good afternoon, I nearly said morning. You're listening to an Advice Line Have Your Say special, uh, an LGBT plus special on BOL Radio. Coming up in the next 55 minutes, we are going to be going through all of uh, the, uh, well, all of what it's like to be LGBT. We're going to be joined by a panel um, and we're also going to be turning some cameras on so you'll be able to see what we're getting up to as well. Uh, That'll be in about five minutes time well in about three and a half minutes time actually we're going to have lots of great music coming up as well our first song we're going to be playing today is from lady gaga it's called born this way and after this we'll have the panel and we'll turn the cameras on you're listening to bol radio it's 25 minutes past 12 baby i was born this way hey same dna Good afternoon, you're listening to um, you're listening to what it's called have your say advice line the lgbt plus special and we are we're in vision. We have cameras on um, this lunchtime, and my mic is extremely loud, so it needs to be turned down. On there, we're having a few little technical difficulties, um, but they will all be sorted out uh, through the course of the program. Uh, so that is all to come later on. Um, but for the moment, go straight into another song from Diana Ross. Diana Ross, I'm coming out on BOL Radio. Uh, that is the first of many um, awesome songs uh, that we're going to be playing this uh, afternoon. Um, and we have been joined in the studio by two of our panel members, and the camera will go to them now. And Owen, hello. Hello, Seb. And Delia, hello. You need to get a bit closer to your mic, love. Hello. Okay, so <laughs> we'll be answering various questions uh, throughout the programme. And the first topic that we're going to be focusing on is all about sort of questioning your sexuality, realising that you're not straight and coming out. Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Brilliant. So we've, uh, we, all, uh, we uh, sent out a little Google form to ask for various questions uh, from the general public and from students and staff in the school, and we've got quite a few of them to answer today. Uh, the first one comes from someone called Amelia, and it's quite simple. How did you know you were LGBT+. plus? Well, I say it's quite simple, um, but I don't know, is it simple, Owen? Is it simple? Well, it took me kind of a while, to be honest. It's um, kind of difficult uh, being like told you are straight the whole, your whole life and kind of realizing that you are gay. But um, I, th- I would say it's difficult, definitely. So, h- how did you know that you? Were how did I know? Uh, I didn't really know. I can't really remember it, to be honest. It was Fancy kind of... boys. No, I had my first boyfriend. I think when I realized I was gay, that's how I knew, to be honest. Um, Delia, how did you know you were LGBT plus? Um, I realised that I fancied both girls and boys. Like, I, there's no simpler way to say it. Really, just realised I like both. And uh, Declan has. I can just see Declan outside the door. Oh so no matter and how how unprofessional, we are just going to let him come in and join in uh, mid link. Um, yeah, you're late. You are slightly late, but that's fine. Um, it's my fault. Declan, it's how fault. did you oh. know you were LGBT plus? How did I know? Yeah. Um, I suppose realising that there was a word for it. Um, like, greater education on it was how I realised. Um, uh, I knew from, like, a young age that I liked guys, but I didn't realise that it was a thing when I found out that there was this whole community of people. That's when I realised that I was LGBT. Um, brilliant. How did you get the confidence to say it out loud and telling people? Were you scared of being judged? That's another question that we've received from somebody. Yeah, that one's anonymous. Um, did you say sing? Sing. What? S- saying it out loud. Oh. So, so how did you get the confidence to come out, Owen? How did I get the confidence to come out? Um, it was kind of through uh, my first boyfriend. He was kind of persuading me. And um, to tell my friends, I messaged him on text. I think uh, I told Delia as well at the time. Um, oh yeah, you did. <laughs> on the on the group chat, um, but that's how I told people, and I just told my parents face to face. To be honest, um, were you scared of being judged? I was scared. I thought um, I wasn't the child they wanted me to be to grow up and have a wife and kids. It was kind of scary for me. But what what was their response? It was mixed. To be honest, my mum was fine, but my dad thought it was a choice and was kind of hard accepting it, so it was quite hard for me to uh, get on with him. That still is now, kind of. Mm -hmm. Delia? Yeah? 
how did you get the confidence to come out? Oh, right. Um, um, I think, well, when I first started realising that I wasn't straight, um, I started to sort of go on the internet and stuff to look at um, what people were saying about it, like look at the gay community forums, um, etc. Like YouTube videos of people's opinions and that sort of seen other people in the world who had been in similar situations to me um, sort of talk about their story and how they came out that from, that gave me confidence and because I was a I'm a naturally confident person anyway so I in in that aspect I didn't find it too difficult um, as it would have come quite naturally to me so I just sort of listened to other people's stories and that for me gave me the power to like be like oh okay hi I'm not straight were you scared of being judged um, by by who? Like what, who? Yeah. Um, Any, anyone that you came. Yeah, out like to. I only recently came out to my mum very recently, so obviously the fact that I'd kept it from her from so long sort of shows that. Um, I think when I because I first came out to my friends, I wasn't afraid necessarily, but like some of my friends, because I didn't know what their narrative of it was, I wasn't quite sure how it was going to be taken. So I wouldn't say I was scared. I was just aware that the responses I would receive may not be like very savoury to me, I suppose, I don't know. Declan, how did you get the confidence to say it out loud? Um, well, for a while I was like, well, I was curious um, about my sexuality and I didn't realise that I was um, gay. I wasn't that like, I wasn't comfortable at all. Like I was, I told people, but it just felt strange. But when I like finally realised that I was gay, um, it just kind of hit me that I was like, this is who I am and I feel like I should express this to other people and so they can understand me better and I can feel like I can feel comfortable in who I am. Were you scared of being judged? Um, not really. I'm not like a super brave person, but my, um, my thinking was that um, if people don't like it, they can get lost. I, I don't have time uh, for people that don't accept me for who I am. Wonderful. Um, Heartfelt. I mean, <laughs> personally, when I came out, I couldn't actually say it out loud. Um, if a friend who I came out to said, Seb, are you gay? And that was how I came out. And if if that friend hadn't said that, then I don't know if I would actually be out or whether I would have just chickened out on the last minute. I don't really know why. I was put um, in a position like that as well, why I couldn't um, say it. But, I mean, we just have to sort of thank thank God for the people around us, really, in some ways, um, and sort of thank our friends as well for being the awesome people that they are. And we're going to go into a song now. Uh, so this, uh, all of the songs today are specially picked. Uh, shout out to my yes. friend Dav for helping me choose these. Um, so we're going to play a little song by ABBA. Um, and basically, is, is, this it's, 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 is it, it Does Your Mother Know? It is. Oh, oh, Favourite. So it's the I'm out, let's go into the song. Well, she does that. Abba, Does Your Mother Know on BOL Radio. Um, next yes, up, we're does. moving on to uh, our <laughs> next topic, which is sort of all about living as sort of a minority um, in a heteronormative society. Now, a heteronormative society, if you don't know, it, a heteronormative society is basically um, just saying that we're all, everyone assumes that you're straight until you come out. Um, so we've got three questions that have come in about this. The first one, do you think there's too much sensationalising of coming out uh, because straight people don't have to? Or do you think it's something important that belongs to the LGBT plus community? That's anonymous. Declan, go. Um, I haven't personally seen many examples of, um, like on TV or things, people coming out in general. So I can't speak for sensationalism um, on this part. Um, what was the second part of your question, sorry? Um, do you think it's something important that belongs to the LGBT plus community? Um, coming out in yeah. general? Um, I mean, in that sense, it sounds like it's a glorified thing that, ooh, everyone should come out, it's so fun. I mean, it's not really a positive... I mean, it can be a really positive experience, but I mean, like, it's not something that everyone wants to do. And like, ooh, I'm really excited for my coming out. Like, it's just... Um, <laughs> Who says that? Exactly. <laughs> like so it's... I don't know if I'd say like, oh, it, it's an f- important thing that belongs to the LGBT community. Um, I mean, it 
stereo it's, it's the thing when you think of about LGBT community you think of oh these people that have to come out um, and that they I mean they shouldn't have to you know um, but yeah I suppose it does belong to the LGBT community it just it's a strange way of wording it <laughs> yeah I think the I think where the question's coming from is that it is I mean I know, I know that you it's not like something you look forward to but it is sort of something quite special and I think that for the rest of my life I will probably we- remember where I was when I came out I mean maybe that is over glorifying it a bit but I think that it is something I think what follows your coming out is yeah is, it's is like, the, like it's like the next step in your life yeah. type thing like yeah and I get that part um, that it's almost like a rite of passage for like an LGBT person like a milestone um, yeah like something that you hit and you're like, I did it, I made it, I'm here. Um, so in that sense, yes, I agree that it's a very important part of the LGBT community. Owen, got any thoughts? Any thoughts? Okay. Um, I don't really see. I see coming out as important for someone personally, but not for... S- well, it's important for people to know, but I don't think it has to do anything with like perceptions of people. Like People may think of someone as completely different after they come out, but don't think that's necessarily the aim it's to inform. Okay. Delia? Um, I think about the whole sensationalism thing, I don't think I said that word right. Um, I do agree with that. I think that there's too much emphasis put on the whole coming out thing, like you have to do it. And I feel like on anybody who may not have that confidence and um, they may be anxious about things like this, that it puts too much pressure on them because they see... Uh, people around them that one of these as you said like sort of rites of passage is cu- the whole coming out process and they'll see it as like a necessary sort of step into becoming comfortable with, the- with themselves and like I don't think that's sort of necessary like of course if I think people need to realize that everybody's different and some people might what might publicly announce it some people might not like um I think there's too much emphasis on it's necessary to find the confidence to publicly announce it and I don't think that's a thing for example I I for example I never did that I just if people asked I said but I never publicly really did it I mean this is probably the most public coming out I've had so far mm. so um I think because so many people are doing it it's almost like it seems like you need to but I would agree that um it is a special part of the LGBT community because everyone does it at some point it's just a matter of how and how pressured you are to do it mm. i don't know what if any of that made sense i think it did um <laughs> what have you have found anyway. to be the general reaction from people when they're told about your sexuality I mean. um i think a lot of people i've told about my sexuality have been okay with it they've been accepting um but some of them i think it's a choice and they kind of find it hard to comprehend that uh, not being straight um, is like weird. And um, I suppose quite a few people I know think it's a choice, but that's their opinion if they want to. Mm-hmm. To quote Lady Gaga from the beginning of the show, oh, we were born this way, baby. <laughs> um, sorry, that was really cringy. Oh, anyway. I think I just puked in my mouth. Oh, so. God. <laughs> um, <laughs> okay, any surprise? Uh, uh, open question, anyone surprised? At what? That, that you are not straight? When oh, you told them. No one was surprised when I came Oh, out. and everyone knew about you. <laughs> everyone, yeah. we, knew. we all knew before you knew. Yeah, everyone knew, like, oh, literally, it wasn't like, good. I came out, and it was the, like, not dramatic at all. I came out, and um, everyone was like, we knew. We <laughs> everyone was like, them. oh, finally. Finally, you took came your out. Time. After, like, five years of asking, oh, are you gay? Are you gay? And, like, I came out. You used to get, the, like, le- like, the question constantly as well. Oh, no, it was, like, awful. <laughs> Didn't you, did you find then, though, that, like, you were annoyed that you didn't necessarily know yourself, but other people claim that they knew. I, I kind of look back and get annoyed by that because they weren't in my shoes. And especially at home, I was taught, I was kept asking, would you ever have kids? Like, that was actually a constant question for me at home. And being, like, no one inside that I was different, it was really hard for me to come to terms with it. Oh, babe. Deep. <laughs> Emotion. <laughs> 
Um, okay, do you think it's right that LGBT plus people are sort of a minority and are singled out in society? Should they not just be accepted as normal people who have the right to go about their day without being stereotyped? That's a question from someone called Josh. I mean, who would answer that and say, yes, I think it's great That's that we're a, really a minority. Like, yes, I, faith. What, how do you answer that? Um, don't quite... What? <laughs> do, 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 you, do you ever feel like you are singled out? Yes. Mm-hmm. Well, like, way? yeah, sure, but yes. automatically, because if you are part of yeah. a minority, then of course you are. Yeah. That's not necessarily, yeah. like, a bad thing. It's yeah. just the way that culture's flowing. Yeah, and the I thing is, like, you have to negative of it, concentrate on the majority sometimes with yeah. things. Um, yeah. I mean, I think there should be more things like um, education. LGBT education, yeah. 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 Um, but I get that the focus is on, like, heterosexual like sexual that's education that's fair because they are the majority yeah. I don't see anything wrong with that because at the end of the day yeah. if yeah. you're part of the minority you can't expect too much <coughs> special treatment because you're just not then you're the just, biggest part of it and the thing is if that was the case then the majority would be worse off because you'd have like this mass of people that yeah. wouldn't that would be in your position and it it's easier for us I suppose because there's less of us yeah so less of us face the problem I, yeah, yeah I don't really see much of an issue with that yeah Cool. Um, so yeah, we just need to sort of shine and be ourselves. Um, remember, you can get in touch with us. Email us radio station at bishoplandoff.org. Tweet us at bolhs underscore radio using the hashtag bolgbt. Okay, years and years shine on BOL Radio. We're going to come out of this song because we've been joined in the studio temporarily uh, by Reverend Rainer Williams um, because he's agreed to share some of his experiences with us as well. Uh, one of the questions which we've sort of, which is sort of floating around, uh, which we're going to sort of try and answer in general, is how it's different for people who are younger, under the age of twenty. Um, so I'm going to start by just asking you, sir, to sort of talk about how you think it might be different for you, as in uh, your experiences to our experiences? Um, I, I, I assume, I can only assume that it's easier for young people today than it was when I was growing up in the 70s, 80s, where um, sexuality wasn't really anything that was discussed in school. We were never taught about um, sexuality at all, so I think In those days, you began to kind of discover who you were, very much on your own in isolation. Um, And I I grew up in a really rural part of North Wales where the assumption was that everybody was straight. Um, And all the kind of talk around me would have been really negative about anybody who was different. They would be seen as different, strange, abnormal. Um, And some really harsh things were said, I think, when I was growing up, which had the result, I think, of pushing most people deeply into the so-called closet and not, not being able to acknowledge um, the normality of what they were feeling or having nobody to talk to. I think that was my experience. What effect do you think this had on you in the long term? Um, I suppose, I look at it positively now and I think, well, maybe I learnt to discover the depths of who I am as a human being and I c- kind of took nothing, nothing for granted and questioned and probed um, what it means to be a human being. I, I look at that quite as a positive thing because I didn't kind of skate through life. I struggled in my early years, but it meant I looked at things quite deeply and I, I see that as a very positive thing because I connect it to faith, which is looking at, looking at life deeply and looking for meaning and purpose in it. So, But I think ultimately it's not a good place to be um, in isolation from other from other people and to think there's something about you that you can't share it's not healthy um, and I think I feel oh how do I feel I think the moment one accepts and declares to other people that this is me and uh, that brings what well, it brought me kind of healing normality um, yeah I'm waffling <laughs> I'm thinking too deep I'm thinking rather than saying sorry when when was that for you? Oh, um, right, relatively late in life. Um, when I was 29 and now I'm 50, so quite a long time ago. But what I worked with young people in university, I was a chaplain, and what I was struck by was young people came to talk to me about their sexuality and about being different. And I would say to them, you've just <coughs> got to accept yourself. God loves you. And I kept on saying this to other people, and I thought, God, 
do I believe that for myself? So it was the courage of other, perversely, it was the courage of other young people in a university setting who accepted themselves and, and embraced that as an issue of God loving them that actually made me think, well, you've got to do that for yourself. And of course, at the time I was married and I actually had children, so it, it was a bit difficult. Um, we're just going to tie in with our next topic, um, which is all about homophobia. Um, generally, how easy is it, this is a question that's come in, generally how easy is it to live as an LGBT plus person and how much discrimination do young people face in the community? Um, open to the floor. Um, Ladies first. Oh dear. Um, I mean, personally, I don't think I faced too much um, as compared to what I know other people have or have faced in you know, the history of LGBT. But um, I think it's always going to be a thing. People are always going to be afraid and have negative things to say of things that they may not understand or have much knowledge on. So I think automatically that's going to happen in any area, really. So, like, I, when I used to receive, like, nasty comments, which, in, in fairness, it wasn't, it's not been very often, um, I never really took it to heart because I sort of understood that they just don't understand, they don't know, and one day they will. Um, and I think it's not as bad now as I think it has been in the past, um, and that young people are a lot more accepting as a majority, and it's a lot easier to, I suppose, come out and be who you are when you're younger, now, especially in this generation. I'd say it's a lot simpler. Yeah, I'd agree with that. Um, especially when I see, um, like, even personal experiences of... Um, of adults and things um, that have spoken out about it and like online and things like that um, talked about their experiences um, and how hard it was for them and when you read up on it like all of the um, the like even more heteronormative society um, back in the 20th century um, I think even though we still have things like homophobia I think it's still so much easier for us um, nowadays to come out and express ourselves um, Thanks last, to David Bowie. Last question before <laughs> the news. Um, do the opinions of others cause big effect to your everyday life and mental stability? Try and keep it to a 20 second answer each. Um, right, quickly. Uh, no, no they don't because I think that if you have a negative opinion on uh, LGBT community members you don't really deserve to be friends with me and you don't deserve to know me so that's it, gone, out of my life. Yeah. I forgot the question. Um, do the opinions of others cause big effect to your everyday life and mental stability? Um, no. There we go, Owen. <laughs> no, not really. Is it? They used to, um, but now they don't, because I just think to myself, well, if you have a problem with me, then actually that is your problem, it's not mine. Lovely, thank you very much. Um, so I think we're going to say goodbye yes, to you, Sir, now. Lovely. Thank you very much. Bye, Sir. Thank, thank you very much. It Thank is you, just mine. gone one o'clock um, and it is time for the latest news, sport and weather from BOL Radio Update. This afternoon, the news is read by Rasheen Jacobson and Bethan Downs. This is BOL Radio. We'll have more tomorrow. Thank you, uh, Rasheen, and thank you, Bethan. Coming up, we'll be talking about school and getting through life, and we'll also be talking about a bit of fun stuff as well. Remember, you can get in touch with us. Email us at radiostation at bishoplandoff.org. Tweet us at BOLHS underscore radio using hashtag BOLLGBT. You can also leave a little comment under the uh, live video, because we are live videoing. bishoplandoff.wordpress.com forward slash watch is where you need to be. A joke. Uh, Liv, no, what's her name? Uh. Jesse J, sorry. Oh. Saucy. Can you oh stop God. talking, please? Uh, Jesse J, it's my party on BOL Radio. Next up, we're going to be talking about school and getting through life um, as a young person who is LGBT. Um, how do you think the school can do more to support the community and the individuals in it if you don't think they already do enough? That's an anonymous question, Declan. Um, I think things like sex education for a start. Um, I mean... I didn't get much heterosexual sex education in my old school anyway, but um, presumably you do here. Um, but from what I've heard, you don't get um, mm -hmm. any whatsoever um, mm -hmm. uh, lesbian, gay, you know, um, sex education, things like that. Um, I think they should be. Um, I think they should be harsher on things like homophobia. 
not that I see it um, every day in things, but um, from past experiences of people that I know that it's, and it's obviously still a thing. Um, so I think they should clamp down harder on that. Delia. Education. Education, education. General, like, I just was, more, yes. please. Yeah. I beg. Gen- in general, um, looking at research done by um, Stonewall in 2012, um, they released the school report 2012, they're about to release the school report 2017, um, and in schools where there isn't that much um, education about non-heterosexual relationships uh, and sex in those non-heterosexual relationships then homophobia has higher rates there Um, it also has higher rates in faith schools in general Mm -hmm. Um, do you think that that's do you think that that occurs here no like do you mean like with uh, yeah do you think that people discriminate against people who are LGBT plus because uh, they believe that it's wrong according to their faith um I think I have once in this school um, specifically, um, she like quoted the Bible and said, "This is wrong." Um, and I said, "I don't read the Bible, so I don't really care." I mean, personally, I think that um, this school is doesn't really fall into that bracket because um, the person who leads on the faith uh, is mm-hmm. Reverend Rennie Williams, and he's Have, gay, like a gay figurehead. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, and works yeah. pretty well. Um, what would you like, uh, straight and? I don't know how to say this word. Cisgenders, is that? Cisgender. Cisgender. That's, Cisgender. Like that's just The normal. gender you're born with. Yeah. Oh. Born um, as. Born, born, uh, born people. Born. Yeah, what, what, yeah, what would you like them to do to help? The whole ally thing. Like, be educated as yes. well. Yeah. Definitely. Like, um, I don't need you to, like, ask me continuously, like, if I'm talking to someone or, like, if someone's, like, being homophobic. I just want you to be, like, a friend. A friend. Yeah. That isn't like as long as you're not against me, I don't really care. Yeah, I mean, yeah. just be supportive, just as you would of anybody else. Because I don't go up to straight people and be like, "Oh my god, I really like support you dating a woman, or I really support you like dating a man." <laughs> <laughs> I don't. Hi, I'm I don't so need happy that. that you identify with your own yeah. gender. Yeah, <laughs> treat us exactly the same because it is, of course, the same love. Sorry. I- oh! Oh! Oh. Said, please said. Leave, get, get in touch in with bin. us watch us online bishoplandoff.wordpress.com forward slash watch you can watch this video live or watch it back later on why not um, right okay topic 5 the fun stuff what's the best thing you find about <laughs> it's just a poorly named title I apologise okay what's the best thing you find about being in the LGBT plus community I can't say what I wanted to say um, I'm not okay well keeping it PG-13, as good old America says. Um, I suppose, like, dating someone that, like, understands you, like... Well, they would, they'd be gay. No, but I mean, like, if... (laughs) When you think about a guy dating a girl, stereotypically, you think, like, oh, the guy, like, like, really likes sport, and then, like, oh, the woman likes shopping, and it's like, yeah, whatever, blah, blah, blah. But, and, like, obviously you still have certain, like, differences in, like, a gay relationship. Um... But at the same time, you have, like, a guy that understands your guy issues, which yeah, yeah, I think yeah. you lack in, like, yeah. a straight relationship. Yeah, no, I, I relate to that. It's interesting. It's, like, your best friend, but yeah. it's, like, different if you get yeah. me. So it's nice. They get the mm-hmm. girl stuff. Girl stuff? <laughs> <laughs> what, what's it, what was the question again? Um, <laughs> what's the best thing you find about being in the LGBT plus community? think the people because you have such a like a community spirit don't you yeah like um yeah, okay. we have pride and you have all of the events like that oh. like um i've been to a couple of like um talks which is kind of like feels really inclusive to be even part of the lgbt plus community mm-hmm. um final question if you had one bit of advice that you would give to someone who is questioning their sexuality or trying to come out or uh, not sure if they were straight or not straight what would it be uh, that could- don't be afraid you are who you are you can't change that whether you if you're if you're questioning and you don't think you're straight um then just be happy with that and um don't feel like you have to be straight to fit in or that you you can't question because you you don't know who you are yet i mean it's a journey um even though i identify as gay i'm still finding out more about myself as i go along through life so you know be happy with who you are and if it takes time, let it take time. Delia. Um, I wholeheartedly agree. That was very emotional. Um, <laughs> I think <laughs> um, there's no need to label it if you don't want to, but 
Oh, I just swallowed my gum. Um, if you do, <laughs> if you do, um, if you do, um, feel like you. <laughs> I'm sorry. Can we do me in a minute, please? Oh, okay. Well, uh, so what? What well, one bit of advice would you give? Um, take your time, basically. Um, like watch as many coming up videos as you like. Like just like take. I took me three years to come out to everyone, so. <laughs> just take your time. <laughs> Dilly, are you ready yet? <laughs> cool. We'll 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 tweet your bit of advice just then from at B O L H S underscore radio. Okay, using I think I'm I'm alright. B O L L G B T. That's basically all we've got time for. Uh, thank you, Declan, for joining us. Thank you, Delia, for joining us. Thank you, Owen, for joining us. Um, remember, the conversation so well, can still continue um, on at B O L H S underscore radio on Twitter using the hashtag B O L L G B T. If you've got any questions, uh, send us an email. Radio station at bishopandoff.org. We'll also have a documentary out um, on the Monday uh, documentary film on the Monday after half term, Monday the twenty. 7th of February your mic's on Declan (laughs) Um, but yeah that's all we've got time for for the moment Um, we're going to finish on yet another awesome song don't can I say what it is can I say what it is Um, I hope you're all proud of yourselves because you should be have a smile go (laughs) 